Hi viewers, my discussion today is spinal cord. I'm going to make an introduction with regard to the spinal cord and I'm going to discuss the uh, basic information with regard to it. Uh, basically speaking, spinal cord is part of the nervous system and you are all aware that nervous system is divided into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system, you know that uh, consists of the brain and the spinal cord. So if you are asked what is a spinal cord, you can see that spinal cord is part of the central nervous system and it connects the brain with the peripheral nervous system. You are all aware that the peripheral nervous system consists of the uh, spinal nerves as well as the cranial nerves. So the spinal nerves and the cranial nerves are, are the peripheral nervous system. So spinal cord, you know, links the brain with the peripheral nervous system so that is the spinal cord so what is the shape of the spinal cord spinal cord is slender like and it begins from the foramen magnum you are all aware that the cranium has a very large hole at it at, 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 at the, the skull has a very large hole at its at, at its own base and that hole is known as foramen magnum and it is that foramen through which the spinal cord you know the uh, the, the the spinal cord now where the spinal cord begins so we can say that the spinal cord begins immediately below the foramen magnum and at the upper border of uh, upper border of the atlas that is the first cervical vertebral bone so the total length of the spinal cord in adult is approximately 45 centimeters in in, in, in males and approximately 42 centimeters in female and uh, it is own weight is approximately 30 gram when you now you know weigh the, the the entire length of the spinal cord the spinal cord has two major enlargements these enlargements are found number one at the cervical region and the other one is at the lumbar region the reasons or the purpose for this enlargement uh, is for, for the supply of the limbs you know that the upper limb receives their own nerve supply from the cervical region through the brachial plexus and the lower limbs receive their own blood, uh, the nerve supply from the uh, lumbosacral plexus so as a result of this supply to the limbs you know for responsible for the movements so we have cervical enlargement because of the brachial plexus and then we have lumbar enlargement because of the lumbosacral or lumbar plexus to supply the upper and the lower limbs respectively generally speaking the spinal cord is also been enclosed by three meninges and you are all aware that even the brain you know is being surrounded by three important meninges and these are membranes you know the membranes they are there to protect the brain as well as the spinal cord and uh, the spinal cord is also surrounded by the same you know membrane that surround the uh, brain and so we have the pia mater the pia mater is also directly adherent to the substance of the spinal cord and this pia mater is you know thickened on either side you know to form what is called ligam ligamentum denticulatum this ligamentum denticulatum is named as a result of its uh, own you know identity with teeth so it looks like a tooth you know so there are 21 pairs of this ligamentum denticulatum and uh, they are just the thickening of the pia mater you know so the pia mater thickens you know you know making this ligaments 20, 21 pairs you have 21 on one side you have 21 on the other side and these ligaments they are attached to the vertebral canal you know within the you know canal that contains the spinal cord and the reasons for this ligamentum denticulatum is to suspend the spinal cord so that the spinal cord doesn't shake when we move it doesn't move laterally uh, as, as a time when we are moving and so the arachnoid matter which is next to the pia mater is enclosing the spinal cord and in between the the the, the arachnoid mater and the pia mater there is also this fluid known as the cerebrospinal fluid and that cerebrospinal fluid you also know that it's also surround the brain so as to give the central nervous system a sort of a cushioning you know so that by the time we move you know that one you know would prevent you know you know uh, uh shaking of the nervous system so it serves as a cushion and it also is, it provides nutrition to the substance of either the brain or the spinal cord 
Uh, so the arachnoid matter is like it is it has a wavy like you know delicate tissues you know that are interspersed you know in between the CSF and the pyre matter and that is why it is called arachnoid because it is on tissues you know connective tissue attaching you know it to the pyre matter it's just like spider like and that is why it is called arachnoid matter and so we also have the other membrane known as the dura matter and this dura matter is the outermost layer that surrounds the spinal cord the same thing you know within the cranium the dura mater also surrounds the brain so the dura mater receives its own name from the the, the the english word known as dura dura means durable membrane that, that means it's very you know very strong it's a tough you know fibrous sheet of membrane that surrounds the spinal cord and so uh we have some vessels you know in between this uh in between these uh, meninges and uh, uh, finally we can see that the, the 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 spinal cord as i said before it begins from the foramen magnum you know and uh, it ends at the level of l1 so at the level of the lumbar vertebral body one it that is where the uh, spinal cord ends and it terminates in form of cone like structure known as the conus medullaris so because it is called like it ends in cone like uh, 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 swelling and that is why it is called conus medullaris and so the pyre matter you know it ends at exactly the level of l1 where the spinal cord ends but it 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 continues down as a thin filament like structure known as phylum terminal this phylum terminal is just like a hair like filament like structure and it goes beyond the level of l1 and this phylum terminal it attaches to the coccygeal bone number one so it ends or terminates at c1 that is coccygeal bone number one and so the two membranes the other two members that is the arachnoid matter and the dura matter they end at the level of s2 so it's supposed to say that the spinal cord, cord ends at the level of L1 in adult. It, this is different when we compare the termination or the end of the spinal cord in children. Like in the, in the, in the fetus, the spinal cord you know, fills in the entire length of the vertebral canal of the developing you know, uh, human being. And immediately after birth or at birth, the spinal cord now shifts to the level of L3. So by the time one is growing, when somebody now reaches an adult stage, and so that is, you know, the spinal cord now terminates or ends at the level of L1, you know, because there is a growth of the, you know, vertebral bones so greater than the spinal cord. That is why the spinal cord now ends at that level. So we have seen that the spinal cord ends at the L1 level, the two membranes, that means the uh, arachnoid matter and the dura matter is terminate at the level of S2, that is sacral bone number two, and the phylum terminal, you know, which is filament like extension of the pyre matter, it ends at the level of the first coccygeal bone. And similarly, the spinal cord has curvatures. This curvatures now, you know, the spinal cord, you know, it, you know, corresponds to the curvature of the vertebral bone or the, uh, the, 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 the spine itself. So we have a, 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 a convexity of the spinal cord at the level of the cervical region. And so that is what we call cervical lordosis. Similarly, we also have that same, you know, curvature at the lumbar region. So we have two curvatures at the cervical region and as well as the lumbar region. So by a large, uh, 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 this is what you people should know with regard to the uh, uh, spinal cord. And so until next time, I'm going to discuss the internal structures of the uh, spinal cord where I'm going to discuss the descending and ascending tracks with regard to the spinal cord. Viewers, thank you very much.